NFL. And we look at a defensive line that has quietly sacked its way to success. Also tonight, the juice returns to the field from the courtroom. We have our regular hit parade of CFL stars and an inside look at one of the CFL's newest and vocal specialists. Got like that. Hi, I'm Neil Lumsden. Tonight, something different. I'll analyze the game from right here at field level as Hamilton plays Edmonton on the Canadian Football Network. The Canadian Football Network. Tonight's game from Ivor Wynn Stadium in Hamilton is brought to you by Carling O'Keefe, Brewers of Foster's Lager. Petro-Canada dealers and agents, our energy is Canada. And Priority Post, EMS Courier, your better business connection in Canada and around the world. Running back Chris Skinner is one of the reasons the Edmonton Eskimos, once again this year, have one of the very best offensive teams in the CFL. Well, so far, you know, our, our offense has been able to mix it up a little bit uh, with Tracy in there. Uh, he's distributing the ball quite a bit evenly around the receivers and the running backs. And so far, I've had a little bit of success. The offensive line's come up fired up this year. Uh, we didn't run the ball much last year, and because of it, we got a chance, and uh, we made some big plays out of it, and uh, they're getting pretty excited about it. Contrasting Skinner's success, it's been a tough year for former Winnipeg and Calgary safety Scott Flagel, who likes what he sees of the Hamilton system. It keeps the safety active, and, uh, you know, I, I really feel I come from Winnipeg, where I've you know, played for a number of years, the safety is always involved and always active, so I, uh, I feel this is a little more conducive to what I'm used to playing. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Hamilton and our CFN telecast from Iverwind Stadium. Bob Irving with Neil Lumsden. Well, I guess the question you would have to ask about tonight's game is, can Scott Flagel and the Hamilton defense handle Tracy Ham in the Edmonton offense? The Tiger Cats had a rough uh, game last Friday against Calgary. The Stampeders rolling up 38 points. The Eskimos have scored 78 in their last two games. So they'll provide quite a test for the Hamilton defensive unit tonight. Well, the man who is usually beside me during these telecasts is not at his usual post tonight. Neil Lumsden will analyze this evening's game from the sidelines. Neil, what's the view like down there? Well, the view is great. Close to the field and close to the fans. I haven't been this close since I was a player, but I'm looking to see a lot of different things tonight. We get so used to watching a TV and watching from the press box, but tonight I think I'll be able to hear some of the quarterback signals, find out when they're going to audible, find out when maybe a fake's coming on, listen to the players talk. It'll be just like old times, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, enjoy your seat, Neil. I assume it's a little bit cooler down there than it is up here. Hamilton and Edmonton are next on the Canadian Football Network. Well, the Edmonton Eskimos have a 3-1 and one record starting this evening's game with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The Tiger Cats at 2-2. Two and two. They've really been up and down this season. Joe Farragelli, the head coach of the Edmonton Eskimos, very pleased with the way things are going. He looks at his team as one that should get better and better as the season goes on because of all the changes they've made. And Al Bruno, very disappointed with his team's play last week against Calgary, losing 38-14, although he did give the Stampeders all the credit in the world for coming back from the dead at 0-3 to play just a terrific football game. Paul is Baldiston. We'll kick things off here at Iverwind Stadium. Another very warm and humid evening in eastern Canada. That's been the story of their summer. Stephen Jones and Henry Gizmo Williams are back to receive. Gizmo has only handled four kickoff returns all season long. His teams have tried to stay away from him. Let's see if us Baldiston attempts to do that. No, he kicks it right to Williams at the Edmonton camp. Henry Williams is up to the 35-yard line. Frank Robinson knocks him out of bounds. The Gizmo Williams, they try to get the ball to him whenever they can, and Joe Farragelli said they'll even reverse it to him on punts and kickoffs. But it looked like they were going to try to come to the left, and they, most of the Ticats came over to where they saw the blockers going. Tracy Hamm at quarterback for Edmonton. We all wondered how the Eskimos would fare when Damon Tracy Allen was hurt. Well, Tracy Hamm has certainly answered the questions, and he answered them in a big way last week. You saw his numbers in a win over Saskatchewan. He's completed 62% of his passes, and he throws on first down, and Les Brown picks it off. There is a flag on the play. Les Brown intercepting Tracy Hamm's first pass of the game. 
and is back to the Edmonton 42-yard line. Will it stand? Well, Les Brown made a great jump in the football after it was thrown to cut in front of Stephen Jones. And that one will stick. Well, this will help the intensity of the Ticat team, but watch after Les Brown makes the interception. Boom, right there. Scott Flagel. Good block to get things going. Now Brown's taking it back upfield. Eskimos were plus five in that turnover ratio, which means they've taken the ball away from the opposition five more times and they've given it away, but very quickly they have turned it over to Hamilton. And on first down, Mike Kerrigan can't find Rocky DiPietro. Al Bruno told us that Mike Kerrigan likes to throw the ball deep, likes to look to Stapler, but I think Bruno, through working with him this week and talking to him, saying, look, let's take the short passes to Rocky DiPietro, the inside receivers, let's loosen that defense up a bit, then there'll be a time to go deep. Second and 10 for Kerrigan and the Ticats at the Edmonton 42, trying to capitalize on the Les Brown interception. We're just underway at Iverwind Stadium. Kerrigan, lots of time, turns around and throws out a chop the lane. And he's out of bounds at the Edmonton 34-yard line, two yards short of a Hamilton first down. Neil, are you at all surprised that Al Bruno came back with Kerrigan after the rough game he had last week with Calgary? Well, I think, Bob, that he knows that Kerrigan is a first-class quarterback. He throws the ball exceptionally well, and I think he understands that a quarterback can have a bad game. But you also have to understand that, you know, you stick with a guy, you don't try to ruin his confidence. Because remember, you've always got Tom Porras, and he's a first-class quarterback also. Porras will hold on his Baldiston's 41-yard field goal try, which is long enough and accurate enough. And just a minute and a half game, the Hamilton Tiger Cats have taken advantage of a turnover. Paulus Ballaston has just kicked a 41-yard field goal following a Les Brown interception. That's one of his Baldiston's kicking shoes. He has a different one on for this kickoff, which once again goes to Henry Williams. And the gizmo gets away from one man. And that can often lead to trouble, but the Ticats are able to corral him at the 34-yard line of the Edmonton Eskimos. So Gizmo has handled the ball twice, and Hamilton, which would have to be one of their main concerns coming into the game, has shut him down very effectively. I don't think that early interception will deter Tracy Ham from throwing the ball on first down either. Remember, they've also got a very effective running game, and that will come into play and help out their passing game. That was only the fourth interception of the season that Ham has thrown in 111 passes. He'll start this drive from the Edmonton 34. Back to pass. There's a flag on the play. Stephen Jones has the ball up at the 49. A gain of 14 or 15. But there is a flag on the play. Well, Tracy Ham starts at quarterback. Johnstone and Skinner will also see Marshall and Spalatini at the running back positions. The receivers, and they're all quality ones. Sandusky, three touchdowns last week. And a good, solid offensive line with young Richardson at right guard. He's only 21 years old. Tracy Ham is all of 24 in his second CFL season. With a first and 10 at the Edmonton 48, they declined the offside penalty against Hamilton and took the game. Ham throws with lots of time, but Sandusky was well covered by Lance Shields, and the ball goes incomplete. I think we might see Tracy Ham roll a fair bit, especially early in the first quarter, to try to get some of that heat of that very effective front four of the Tiger Cats, who've accumulated a number of sacks, and I think being able to roll out will take that first upfield charge away from them and make them move laterally. Tracy Ham has really taken charge of the Edmonton Eskimos, which most quarterbacks will do once they're thrust into the position he is in with an injury putting Damon Allen down and Ham forced into action. But he has handled it very well. Joe Farragelli couldn't be more pleased. The screenplay, Johnstone cut down very quickly by Gerald Corbin, the middle linebacker, and the Edmonton Eskimos will be forced to punt. Looked very quickly like it was going to be a successful play. The offensive line of the Eskimos played the defense very well, letting them come upfield, then letting them release. But you watch number 38, Daryl Corbin, the middle linebacker. He's going to read and sit still and read that quarterback. There goes John Stone. He's man-to-man -man coverage. That's his man. He goes to get him. 
Third down and 10 Eskimos. Frank Robinson, the leading tackler for the Tie Cats this year at their bench. Jerry Corrick to punt. Has a 44 and a half yard average. Nine yards better than his counterpart Paul as ball is to Mrs. Winfield. And he finds an opening. Earl Winfield up to the 38 yard line of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Good run back by Earl Winfield. A 40 yard punt by Corrick. And a 13 yard return by Winfield. Now we'll see if Kerrigan starts running the football. Last week against Carrig uh, Calgary, Al Bruno said we want to run the ball at least 30 times. Now will they start to establish that now or will Kerrigan continue to throw the football? Neil and I asked Al Bruno what's your biggest concern about your football team and he said without any hesitation our running game. This is Jet Tommy on first down. Good hole off the left side up to the 45. He'll have a gain of six or seven yards. Mike Kerrigan starting at quarterback. He started every game for the Ticats this season. Johnny Jones and the Canadian Jet Tommy, his running backs. The receiving corn. We'll see some of Tony Champion in there tonight. He's back from injury. And that offensive line, the big offensive line. Second down and three. Ticats, they're 45. This is Johnny Jones. Taking it to the outside across the 50 up to the 52 another seven yards and that's a Hamilton first down and there's the tie cat running game Neil that Al Bruno longs to see more of. Well it certainly puts your quarterback and your offense in a great situation when you can do what Jed Tommy did on first downs rip off six or seven yards because as a defense you don't know if the ball's going to be run or if it's going to be thrown and Jed Tommy seals Larry Ruck to the inside see him slide his hips around. He closes, Ruck closes off the inside gap, but a good block of turning him inside, and the runner goes outside. Kerrigan on first down, back to pass, throws for Winfield, but he can't get to it at the 25-yard line. It was uh, way too far for Winfield to even get close to. Winfield off to a good start. He's got 21 passes for over 300 yards and a couple of touchdowns in Hamilton's first four games. Winfield adding another dimension. He's been playing slot back last year. Now he's out playing outside. A great special teams player. You know, he can make an awful lot of difference, especially if Champion comes in and goes to slot back. That's quite a threat on one side of the field. Second and 10. Tie catch from there, 53. They lead 3 nothing. Four and a half minutes into the game, and Johnny Jones cannot corral. A little swing pass from Mike Kerrigan that might have been interesting for the Tie Cats with a couple of blockers out front. But Hamilton will be left in a punting situation. Well, those are the plays that you'd like to see your running backs hold on to the football. A little play like that quite simply kills a drive and good field position. Ball is ball is in. You see the average, which uh, could best be classified as poor. They've been working with us, Baldiston. He has a strong enough leg, but he's bothered by different things and doesn't concentrate the way they'd like to see him when he punts the football. The lone man back is Henry Williams. He stumbles as he crosses the 20, gets out to the 24-yard line. Foster's Lager and the Canadian Football Network bringing you the best of the CFL. 23-year-old Doug Davies out of Simon Fraser, a second-round draft pick last year, has just recovered a Henry Williams fumble at the Edmonton 37-yard line. Gizmo running up to try and field the punt by Osbaldiston on the run. Had it hit his hands and then his chest. And it landed in Doug Davies' lap. And the Ticats, once again in a three-all game early in the second quarter, have a great chance to go into the lead. Will they capitalize? Not on this play as John Manderich sacks. Mike Kerrigan. No better way to welcome yourself back, not only to your teammates, but at the city of Edmonton. It's John Mandrich getting through. You know, coming into this game, the Hamilton Tire Cats were number one for protecting the quarterback. They'd only allowed 10 sacks. So that's not bad, but uh, you, from the inside, you've got to be able to pick. See, there's three people. What he does there is just simply slides through, just almost breaks up, and when Kerrigan starts to go, he finds that gap and steps sideways. Neil Lumsden having a different look at the game tonight, doing his analysis from the sidelines. Jack Sheptelaine with the pass from Kerrigan on second down and long. Gains seven or eight yards, but he's a good six short of a first down at the 32 of the Edmonton Eskimos as running back Johnny Jones has some repairs done. Well, a great read by Kerrigan because safety Don Wilson of the Eskimos had come up and blitz so that 
um, automatically the defense goes into man coverage. Chapdelaine reads it, and so does Kerrigan. Kerrigan, they don't get the first down, but they do get a completion. So Paulus Ballaston on third down and six will attempt a 40-yard field goal. Tom Porras will hold it. 3-3 three, three the score. We'll see if Ballaston can put Hamilton back in front. He has the distance, and he has the accuracy. The Tricats go in front six to three at the four-minute mark of the second quarter. Bob, you can really tell, especially at this level. At halftime tonight, a look at Edmonton kicker Jerry Corrick, who has proven he belongs. But you have to show them what you do on the field to eventually, uh, for them to accept you on the team. Paul is Baldiston will change shoes again as the Edmonton Eskimos have asked him to kick off after that successful field goal as Baldiston struggling with his putting this year, as we've talked about. Not uh, so for Jerry Corrick, who has been solid in both areas, place kicking and putting, is a young man who's waiting for his permanent team. <laughs> Waves at us all. <laughs> Looks like a couple of old defensemen I've seen before. <laughs> Eleven minutes to go in the second quarter at Iverwind Stadium. 6-3 Hamilton. These two teams usually play crazy high-scoring games. They did that last year when they met twice. So far tonight, the offensive units on both sides have sputtered. Osbaldiston's kickoff from the Hamilton 35. Stephen Jones at the 15 of Edmonton. Flag down. As Jones trips over a Hamilton player and a blocker at the Edmonton 27, and I think the penalty will also be against the Eskimos for an illegal block. Well, many times in this situation, especially on kickoff return, you chase a man down, you try to get in front of him, but you just end up pushing him from behind, which is considered a clip. It's not easy to position yourself in front of a guy who's got a full head of steam, and now you've got to run with him and turn and block him. The illegal block, Edmonton number 67, first down. Neil, this view from field level is nothing new for you, of course. You played so many years and stood there so many years on the sidelines. What's it like? You enjoying it? Yeah, I really am. I'm seeing some things that I haven't seen since I was a player, and, and I'll relate some of them to you as the game goes on. But the, the, the little things that you wouldn't notice unless you were right by the field. Eskimos from their 13-yard line, first and 10. Tracy Ham back to pass, and this one's batted in the air. And into the end zone, Mike Walker got through. What a year he's had. Walker leading the Ticats with sacks at six coming into this game. And he will get a knockdown there. Well, you talked to a lot of offensive linemen, and Hector Pate has mentioned to me many times the quickness that Walker possesses, what a fine athlete he is, and how he can turn something that simple into a, into a knockdown and then a sack. 30 years of age, Mike Walker, right in his prime years. Second down and 10, Eskimos from their 13. They trail 6-3. We're nearly five minutes into the second quarter. Tracy Ham throws. He has Rick House up at the 22, and he gets away. House to the 30 and up to the 35, up to the 37 of the Edmonton Eskimos. House showing some great ability. It's coming right at me, a quick flat. He goes from the inside receiver spot. Once he's caught the ball, watch him gather himself and make a move. He knows what he wants to do because he has a sense of where the secondary man is. Watch this. All of a sudden, Sping, back up field, takes a real good shot from Scott Flagel. That's that experience of knowing where he is on the field and where the defender is. Ninth catch of the year for Rick House as we look over Neil Lumsden's shoulder. <laughs> the Eskimos first and 10 from their 37, and somebody on the right side of the Edmonton offensive line jumped before the ball was snapped. Procedure, Edmonton 51, first down repeated. Dave Richardson, quite a story coming into the Eskimo camp this year, 21 years old. And even in training camp, the coaches said he pass blocks as well as any of our veterans right now. Joe Faragelli is trying to figure out where he learned it. Well, he just turned 21 years of age. What a story young Dave Richardson is. First down and 15 Eskimos from their 32 after that procedure penalty. Tracy Hamm. Steps away from the initial rush and then throws it up long for Sandusky. He can't get to it down at the 30. I think he tried to draw an interference call there by making some contact. 
with Howard Fields, but not so. There was, however, a penalty. Well, I think what it's going to be is a late hit. Tracy Ham turns and launches the ball downfield. And off, in the case is often on sprint outs. The middle linebacker's freed up and hits, comes to the quarterback. Roughing the passer, Hamilton 38, first down. After he throws the football, and that was simply the case. He goes up to block the pass and comes down and, and just simply headbutts Ham. Rookie linebacker Daryl Corbin guilty of a very, very costly penalty to the Tiger Cats, who lead 6-3, to three, nine minutes left in the second quarter, and have handed the Eskimos a first down at the Edmonton 47-yard line. Tom Richards in motion left. The toss comes to Chris Skinner, who turns it back the other way, breaks one or two tackles. Mike Walker hit him first. Rockford as well. And Skinner got up to the 50. He'll pick up three yards for the Eskimos. Skinner showing a bit of his experience and savvy right there. That's a that's a sweep supposed to go completely to the right, but he sees an opening. Hopefully that what you've seen here has over pursued him, but not the case. The backside stayed home where they're supposed to, and it limits his game. Second down and seven. Eskimos at their 50. Ham, here comes Walker and Stillman. Ham still on his feet, and he finally gets it away. Intended for Marco Sincar, but Tracy Ham looked like he was just trying to get rid of that one and prevent a five or six yard loss, which he did. And for good reason, he had Rod Skillman and Mike Walker hot on his heels and running out of real estate on this near the sideline. So the score holds at 6 3 for Hamilton, eight minutes and 20 seconds left in the second quarter. Now, Neil, I assume you're on your toes down there and you're watching every play that uh, that doesn't come your way, are you? I'm rather enjoying it when it gets close. Well, don't lose your concentration. Here's Winfield. Earl Winfield, nice return up to the 32-yard line of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. This game is brought to you by Foster's Lager on the Canadian Football Network. Return that punt 11 yards, a 39 yard kick, and he also was hurt on the play. Last week, Winfield struggled in and out of the football game with a very sore right thigh. Makes a pretty good move there and then cuts back, but it almost seems like McLean had that right leg. He could have extended it just that much more. Tom Porras in at quarterback for the Tie Cats, who have only managed 78 yards in total offense in the game thus far, and we have 750 left in the second quarter, so Al Bruno has elected to make a change, and Tom Porras comes into the game. Well, asking Bruno how he compared Porras and Kerrigan, he said Mike Kerrigan likes to go along a lot more. Porras is more of the, a sticker type of quarterback. Throw the short balls, likes to pick the defenses apart. They quickly give Kerrigan a clipboard and tell him to chart some plays. That's got to be the last thing you want to do when you've just been yanked from the game. You're angry with yourself. And right away, you're put to work on the sidelines. Porras on second and 10 will throw for champion. He reaches back but can't get it. Up at the 43-yard line, he was in first down territory. Tony Champion, first game back from injury. And Hamilton, once again, will have to punt. Well, it takes a while to get back in the game shape. Tony Champion, who had a very sore hamstring through training camp, couldn't practice, and really now is just starting to get in the feeling of working with the quarterbacks. Practicing all week or for a few weeks is not like playing in a football game. Paul as Baldiston has kicked two field goals to take care of Hamilton's scoring. That's one more than Jerry Corrick has kicked. It's Ticat six, the Eskimos three. Seven, 20 left in the second quarter. And another good punt by as Baldiston. Henry Williams way back to his own 29. And he's brought down at the 37 or 38 yard line. We have 7-12 left now until halftime. Field goals, all the scoring we've seen. Seven minutes, 12 seconds left until halftime. Earl Winfield has a hip pointer, which can be a very painful injury. We don't know if he'll be back or not. Mike Kerrigan not injured, the Hamilton starting quarterback. He has simply been removed and replaced by Tom Porras because he couldn't get the Hamilton offense going. Tracy Ham hasn't had much more success for the Eskimos, and this time he's intercepted by Gadavekis, who laterals at the Flagel. Scott Flagel, there's a flag down, is back to the 32-yard line. 
of the Eskimos. And Bob, Tracy Ham is down by the sidelines, being helped up by Dave Richardson, but he looks like he's a little bit shaken up. Tracy Ham again trying to buy some time, rolling to the sidelines. The defense does a nice job of staying in their areas. You'll watch Ed Gadavakis just stay in between himself and the receiver. Ham has no place to go. Almost better to throw it right out of bounds, but he tries to drop it into Tom Richards. Gadavakis just backpedals and makes a nice play, then tries to get it to Scott Flagel. Does on one bounce, that is. Yeah. A one hopper to Flagel. Well, here's Tracy Ham right here trying to close in and make the tackle. Right there, that extra shot by Frank Robinson, or a block, as you can be considered, because he's an offensive player then. Put, shook him up, shook him up a little bit. Well, the penalty moves the ball back to the 52 of the Eskimos. Flagel had it down to about the 35. Jed Tommy with a handoff, plates his way across the 45. He'll have a gain of seven or eight for the Tiger Cats, who have had numerous opportunities tonight they had a long kick return they've now had the two turnovers and chances to score good field position but all they've managed is two field goals they lead six to three the key right there bob is the chances if you don't execute and put in the end zone those chances don't keep coming at you all game well they've only had well not even 100 yards in total offense jet tommy carrying on second down and two He'll have a first down to the Edmonton 42-yard line. What a difference this year as opposed to last year for Jed Tommy, who only played two games last year, had uh, knee surgery, and really looks like a, a healed and well and healthy football player this year. Uh, a fullback of his caliber and size and strength makes an awfully big difference, not only in blocking, but being able to get the three and four and five and six yards and occasionally breaking one. Five and a half minutes until halftime. First and ten. As Horace dumps it off to Steve Jackson. He's down to the 35 of the Edmonton Eskimos for a gain of six or seven. Steve Jackson in the backfield replacing Johnny Jones. So you've got two pretty big fellas in there that can do a good, do a good job. But Horace just simply taking what the defense is giving. You saw how far back number 43 Craig Schaefer was. Although the running back just comes out if there's no blitz and finds that open area. Tony Champion is in for Winfield, too. He splits wide left on second down and about four and a half. Horace looks for Champion. Now looks back the other way, and he'll put his head down. Danny Bass met him right at the 35. Horace got close to the 34, two to three yards short of a first down. Well, that front five offensive line of the Hamilton Tire Cats has changed a little bit from last week. Ralph Schultz is in a right guard replacing Lloyd Fairbanks. See John Manners getting a pretty good workout right there. Good job by number 56, Dale Sanderson, of keeping a separation between himself and John Manners, getting those hands out in front of him and using him in the strength position. Osbaldiston will attempt this kick from 42 yards on third down and two to three yards. Good snap. Horace puts it down. Osbaldiston has the distance and the accuracy. He's three for three on the night. And the Ticats have a 9-3 lead with four minutes and 25 seconds to go until halftime at Iverwind Stadium. Bob, one of those things I said to you that I, you can notice on the field here that you can in the booth is the difference when any kicker, but in this case, Osbaldiston makes good contact with the ball. Last field goal he made, he hit it a little bit shy underneath rather than in the middle. This one he hits just square on the button. Sounds good and plenty of distance. You watch nice follow through, good placement of that left foot just in front of the ball. That's perfect. And now we're going to be where the cornerback is and hopefully not the ball at the same time. <laughs> All right, Tracy Hamill try to get that Edmonton offense cranked up now. Looks for Stephen Jones on first down, but can't find him up at the 52-yard line. 78 points. Stephen Jones' number, that's the amount of scoring the Eskimos have done in their last two games, both victories. But tonight, with four minutes left in the first half, they've only managed three. And those have come off the foot of Jerry Corrick. Almost looks like Robinson is receiving some direction, but he's not. He is shielding Frank, Frank, the calls coming in Frank. from the sidelines to the defense from the camera. Tracy Ham throws, and this one is either intended for Sandusky or House, but nowhere near either of them. Tracy Ham is now four for 17 in the passing department. Four out of 17 for 52 yards, and he's had two intercepted, and he looks like he's in a bit of pain as well. 
He does look a little bit uncomfortable as he takes it to the sidelines, and that could be from that last hit. He was moving his shoulder and his arm, so that one shot could have done it. The Hamilton defense is the recipient of that applause you're hearing. As they have shut down a high-powered Edmonton offensive unit so far this evening. Corrick's kick picked up by Wally Zatilny, and he was leveled by Chris Johnstone at the 36-yard line, a 44-yard kick by Corrick, and a five-yard run back by Zatilny. Zatilny's shown he's got some great quickness, caught a long ball in Calgary as a receiver, but at this point, Chris Johnstone puts a shot in his chest that was just, I mean, you could feel it here. I'm only about 15 yards away from it. And you say you want to get in on some of that, Neil? Well, if I've got a helmet and shoulder pads. <laughs> Thought you would have gotten over that by now. Well, there's been a lot of hard hitting as the defenses have controlled this first half. Tom Porras intercepted. Ronnie Howard will take this one in. There is a penalty flag. There's a flag on the play as Ron Howard walks into the end zone with a Porras throw. Will it stand or will a penalty take it away? 40 yards for Ron Howard. Procedure, Hamilton 66, decline, touchdown. It'll stand, and it's a great interception by Ron Howard. This is his first game back after he had some minor surgery on a calf, and you watch him lay in the weeds here. He's going to wait till this ball is thrown and then just come up and great placement. Good job of reading the quarterback and reading what Rocky DiPietro is doing. He did this against Calgary in his last game he played this year, just at the start of the season. And if Jerry Corrick can add the convert, the Eskimos will take the lead for the first time in the game. 26-year-old Ron Howard, Tennessee State, in his fourth year. And he's going to keep the football. Greg Vavra holding for Corrick on the convert attempt, which is up and good. And Edmonton, just as quick as that, goes in front. 10-9, 319. The time left in the first half. to get that ball back from an eager fan the Eskimo bench I'm not having much luck either well Ron Howard went to flip it into the, the dugout area and he threw it a little high in his excitement hit the top of the dugout and it bounced into the crowd so they'll try to retrieve that souvenir for him while Tom Porras the Hamilton quarterback who was victimized for the interception discusses things along the sidelines Eskimos have quite a streak here, Neil, at Iverwind Stadium. They've won their last eight games here and really have had Hamilton's number over the years, won, winning 11 of their last 12 games with the Tiger Cats. Well, that's the temperature just about where I'm standing. We're pretty darn close anyways. Not as hot as it was last week, but still warm on the turf, especially for the players. And that, of course, doesn't convey the message that the humidity adds to that. The humid X was around 40 at game time. Here's Zatilny with the kickoff. Wally Zatilny gets it up to the 48-yard line before Don Wilson lowers the boom. You have to understand that Zatilny goes 170 maybe dripping wet. So when he decides to exchange with just about anybody on the other team, he's going to come out in the short end of it, as he did that time. Especially Don Wilson, who plays free safety for the Eskimos, who's known for his striking ability, especially when he gets a run at it. You admire Zatilny's gusto. Perhaps would question his judgment sometimes. <laughs> but he brought that one back 28 yards. First and 10, tie Cats at their 49. Horace hands off to Jed Tommy, who couldn't find any room off right tackle. Turned back to the inside. Much more there. 2.55 left until halftime. This is a Foster's Lager telecast on the Canadian foot last Edmonton play. John Mandarich is also having some ice applied to a problem on his arm as the game hasn't produced a lot of points, but it has produced its share of hurts. Jerry Corrick. Just got that kick away. Winfield fumbles it, luckily for him out of bounds, at the 40-yard line of Hamilton. So with 6.41 left in the third quarter, and Edmonton leading the Tiger Cats 10-9. to Hamilton gets the ball once again. When Cork first got to the Eskimos, he was a three-step punter. Now you see just two steps. 
It allows him to move up a little bit more and get the ball off an awful lot quicker than if he was taking the normal three steps. 36-yard punt by Corrick as Tom Porras comes back into the game at quarterback. He relieved Kerrigan in the second quarter. Kerrigan came back out to start the third. But Bruno will try Porras again and see if he can move the football. Porras will throw, but it's no good. Intended for Stapler, who's unhappy. Steve Stapler has a goal of catching 2,000 yards worth of passes this year. But at the rate things have gone tonight, he won't come anywhere near that. Well, Stapler showing a little bit of his frustration there, and I think that's going to happen a little bit more as the game goes on. The receivers are getting themselves in an open position, but the quarterbacks just haven't been able to get the ball to them as now we see Larry Ruck, the outside linebacker, to receive some attention. We may be seeing some cramping here because of the heat and humidity, which is often evident games played under these weather conditions. Neil, I'm almost tempted to wonder why these quarterbacks are having trouble throwing the football tonight, and I would suggest the, uh, the stickiness of the climate might have something to do with it, except as we look at Edmonton's assistant coaches, except last week when Calgary was in here, the weather was exactly the same, and the Stampeders and Rick Warman did not have any trouble at all throwing the ball. Well, so Rick Warman didn't have trouble last week, and he didn't have trouble the last game when they played the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He was as on target as I've seen a quarterback play. And the man who worked for Al Bruno, his assistant coaches. Dave Richardson has a twisted ankle. John Mandrich has a torn bicep. And in spite of that, he has a bit of a smile on his face. A twisted, or a, a torn bicep. Wouldn't uh, bother a man like Mandrich that much. He's called Juice by his teammates. A rough and ready individual. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Let me get in here. I gotta get in here. <laughs> well, the Wayne Gretzky trade still being talked about, and perhaps will be a year from this date. They're very aware of it here in Hamilton. It's pretty hard not to be aware of it and be talking about it if you're the least bit interested in sports, even if you're not. Horace on second and 10 will take off and run, and he'll get a Hamilton first down. Step out of bounds at the 54-yard line. That is the first first down of the second half for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Well, maybe this is the type of thing Hamilton needs to get some fire under the players because Porras takes off, and when he gets downfield, you're going to see some great hustle of people picking off the Eskimos. He's going to release up, no one to throw it to. Now, you look at Danny Bass. Danny Bass is just starting to lick his lips, moves over. Good cut by Porras. Real good block right there, and another good block there. Good action downfield and good hustle shown by the Tiger Cats. Evidence there that Tom Porras is... A better than average runner. Steve Jackson carrying on first down off the right side. Johnny Jones, the import running back for the Thai Cats, was injured in the first half and is out of the game. Jackson gains about four or five off the right side. I thought we might see a little bit more of the offense that uh, Al Bruno was talking about with only one running back in the set and five receivers in there trying to threaten and put more pressure on the Eskimo secondary. Scott Flagle was saying before the game he's the only player in the league who's 0-4. Of course, he was with Calgary for their first three losses and then with Hamilton last week when they lost to the Stampeders. He'd like to get that zero out of his log. Torres throwing long down the right sideline and it's intercepted by safety Don Wilson. Wilson is back up near the Edmonton 50 as a penalty flag comes down. Well, when you have the guys in the secondary of the caliber, Don Wilson, Ron Howard, Cliff Tony, Steve Benjamin, and Stanley Blair, that ball better not be up in the air for more than a couple of seconds because these guys break on the ball and get to it as quickly as anybody. And you're going to see a classic example here. Tom Porras puts it up, and he just, just seems to come out of his hand. And here comes Wilson right across your screen, just like playing center field in baseball. Brian Warren, a rush in. 
Trying to take the feet out, boy. What a great job of staying on your feet and showing your agility. When you're cut, you're going down. You're just getting to the quarterback however you can. And Neil, another very poorly thrown football by a Hamilton quarterback. Just nothing on the ball at all. The Eskimos with a 10-9 lead from their 35. Tracy Ham has it batted in the air. And it falls about uh, 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage incomplete. Ron Wilson from North Carolina played a year or so in the Buffalo Bills. As a matter of fact, when Joe Farragelli was coached there, and that's one of the reasons he's playing safety, because he was the safety at the Bills. And you know, when you're being blocked, and he was being that man was being blocked Skillman well by Rod Connop to get your hand up and, and get knocked down the ball is a pretty good job. Ham and the Eskimos from their 35 with a second and 10. Here comes Mike Walker, and down goes Tracy Ham. Well, this is the group they call the quiet ones. No posters and no pictures taken, as Joe Farragelli said, but as coming into this game, you've got to be worried about the guys that don't speak much. And he should be right there. What a great play by Walker. I mean, he goes past three people to get to the quarterback. He deserves a standing roll. Uh, he has been an absolutely dominant force in every game the Ticats have played this year. Jerry Corrick gets away a terrific punt. Winfield way back at his 31-yard line. And he's only able to get back to about the 38 as Jerry Corey kicks the Eskimos out of trouble. A 55-yard punt. And the Ticats don't have near the field position they would have anticipated. Mike Walker has a lot of talented people in his family. His sister, Doran, is a singer, and she's opened a couple of concerts, concerts for the likes of the Temptations and Luther Vandross. So you can't play football, you can sing in that family. Lots of talent there. Center Dale Sanderson is out of the Hamilton lineup with a cramp as we saw Mike Walker taking time to sign an autograph in the heat of battle. Tom Porras on first down is going to run and he gets to the 44-yard line for a gain of close to five. Brett Williams over to make the tackle. Talking with Mike Roach, he feels Brett Williams has an uncanny a canny ability to see what's going on. Tremendous peripheral vision and awareness of what's happening around him, and that's what makes him so effective. Rookie Doug Davies, who recovered a Gizmo Williams fumble earlier in the game, takes over from Dale Sanderson at center. Second and five, Ty Cats at there, 44. 310 left, third quarter, Edmonton leading 10-9. Tom Porras throws, Winfield catches at center field. And he's down to the Edmonton eight. Almost, almost seems simple when we can look at it. Tom Porras does get some stuff on the ball this time. Watch Winfield come back, make a move to the outside, get away from one. Now he'll come back inside. Wilson does the right thing to force him in. And like he was shot out of a cannon, Ron Howard coming in from the right of the screen. Right there, boom. If he doesn't make the tackle, that's a touchdown. Time to go. <laughs> Well, that's a great effort by Ron Howard, Neil, as you said. He's over on the other side of the field, and he saved the touchdown. From the seven, Porras puts it in the end zone for Stapler. Touchdown! First touchdown of the game for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and they go in front 15 to 10. The quarterback, Porras, throws the ball to a hole. Watch Stapler come underneath right now into that hole where the ball is thrown through. The quarterback isn't necessarily trying to hit him on the run, but throw to an underneath area where he can make an adjustment to, and the defensive back can't. Well, a play where a cornerback is at a terrible disadvantage. And if the wide receiver has the guile of a Steve Stapler, he'll adjust to the football and make the catch, which he did. As Paul is going to the convert, and Hamilton is back on top, 16 to 10. 
That scoring play coming at 12-22 here in the third quarter. Bob, it may seem kind of silly, but at the start of the drive, we said when Forrest ran with the football and we saw some hustle downfield by the offensive linemen and the receivers, that might be the thing that turns and turns things around for these tie caps. Evidently, it's cranked them up a notch. Fourth touchdown of the year for Steve Stapler. And the major set up by the 60-yard pass to Winfield as Joel Ferragelli wearing a somewhat concerned look. Tries to get his team and his offense in particular going with some encouragement at the sidelines. Touchdown drive was a three play, three play, 71 yarder. But finally, the Hamilton fans got some offensive excitement to cheer. They've celebrated six tie cat turnovers tonight and three Paula's ballist and field goals. And now they have a touchdown to make them feel good. But if anyone can get them back at the game quickly, it can be Henry the Gizmo Williams. He did it here last year with a punt return, but it's Stefan Jones' turn. Well, he's a good returner, too, but he's cut down by Zatilny at the 35. With the score, Hamilton 16 and Edmonton 10. We pause 10 seconds for the stations from coast to coast to identify themselves. You're watching the Canadian Football Network. at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton. The Canadian Football Network were late in the third quarter. 2.23 to go. Five cats leading the Eskimos by six as Chris Skinner takes a handoff from Tracy Ham and bashes his way up to the 43 and then draws a penalty flag which is probably for a late hit. Well, I think we're seeing Chris Skinner run the best we've seen in years. It's just the maturity that he has shown from one year to another. I think uh, much of it has to do with the offensive line and giving him an opportunity to find an area to run to. Piling on, Hamilton number 15, first down. Les Brown is called for piling on. So the 10-yard run by Skinner is increased to 25 yards in total with the penalty, and the ball moves to the Hamilton 51-yard line. After that run, Skinner is still down on one knee, having some problems after that play. It might very well have been that shot by Brown. Well, Tom Porras, who we saw just a minute ago at the Hamilton bench while Chris Skinner leaves the field, really did well last year in the two games against Edmonton. In those two games, he completed 48 of the 73 passes for 698 yards and five touchdowns. And he has just led the Ticats to their first and only touchdown of the game in a 16 to 10 lead, but the Eskimos are in Hamilton territory from the 51. Johnstone carrying, stopped for a gain of a couple. Out of that sprint formation where Ham can keep going and roll out or hand off to the running back, David Solvay at the top of your screen plays it well, takes the block on by Hector Pache, then closes that gap very quickly. Graduate from Harvard does a nice job and compliments the other three on the defensive line. Second and eight, Eskimos from the Hamilton 49. Ham fires Sandusky, reaching, cannot grab it at the 40-yard line. Well, Bob, I've said a number of times that if a receiver comes back to the quarterback, it makes it awfully difficult on the, the man in the secondary to break it up. But I think right there we saw a classic example of Shields closing in and wrapping that arm around Sandusky just after he caught the ball. Outstanding coverage. Well, the Tiger Cats have really gotten the fans into the game with that touchdown by Steve Stapler. And they have been a pretty quiet and this gruntled bunch since late in the second quarter. Korak with a good punt. Winfield at the one. And Earl Winfield a couple of times looked like he had an opening, but it was sealed off, and he stopped at a five-yard return after the 48-yard punt 
by so Jerry Corey. I think it, yeah. you point a finger at a gentleman who's made a, a big impact on this game and not an offensive player is Mike Walker. Boy, he's he's been just outstanding at the interior of that defensive line. One oh six, the time left in the third quarter at Iverwind Stadium. Well, those numbers right there tell you what a miserable night it's been for the men behind the center, the quarterbacks. Ham, 7 out of 26. And Kerrigan and Porras, not a whole lot better. Jet Tommy carries on first down, and he's cracked by Mike McLean, who's in the game, as he pops through for a couple Tommy of yards. Well, you, you look at those statistics, and you, you, you have to figure that the, you just got to come out of it with a win, so you don't have to look at the statistics after the game because they can be pretty depressing. It's, it's time to just not worry about how many completions, but let's get it back in the end zone and win the game. So Porras and Kerrigan, 9 for 25. Tracy Ham, 7 for 26. Not exactly a passing clinic, but uh, again, let's give the defensive teams their due. They have obviously played a role in it. Well, I, I'm a firm believer that when an offensive team is having problems moving the ball, you can't always point your finger at a group on an offense and say, hey, they're just not playing well because that's not always the case. They might not be playing well because it's something the other guys are doing and they happen to be doing it a little bit better. Dale Sanderson went out of the game in the last series replaced by rookie Doug Davies, the center of the Ticats. Davies back in there now. Sanderson had cramp problems, and it looks like he has more on a hot, humid night in Hamilton. Well, we're going to be back down east in just a few days, Tuesday night in Toronto Exhibition Stadium, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Not a lot of time to get ready for the Toronto Argonauts, who traveled home from Vancouver today and won't have much more time to prepare after beating the BC Lions last night. Hamilton at Toronto Tuesday. We'll have it on the Canadian Football Network. The Toronto Argonauts, Neil Lumsden, after losing their opener to the Ticats, are starting to show why just about everybody picked them as a very strong contender before the season began. Well, they certainly are a well-rounded group, both offense, defense, addition of some exciting people on special teams. They've got the kicking game with Chomik and Alisic. I mean, they, they really are a team that you have to take very seriously because even when they're not playing well, they've got all the abilities to hurt you. Actually, the Toronto Argonauts, as we look at their head coach, Bob Obilovich, the man in the pink shirt with the slight receding hairline. <laughs> the, the Argos uh, took an overnight flight home, had their post-game run today in Toronto, and Bob Belovich, there's never a, a dull moment or a quiet moment, it seems, for these coaches, is here having a look at the first-hand look at the Hamilton Tiger kids. Well, he gets an opportunity just to come down the road a little bit, about 45 minutes from Toronto, and take in a lot of Hamilton games, and I'm sure he does it even when they don't have to play them the following week. Head coach is a busy job. Sanderson shaking his head as he hobbles off the field. Second down and six, the Thai Cats from their 10-yard line. 24 seconds left, third quarter, 16-10 Hamilton. Tom Porras guns it over the middle, and it's nearly picked off. It's very lucky for Porras that it wasn't. Dave Davies from Simon Fraser University playing the center for Dale Sanderson. He's got to take on the toaster. And I think what they might tell him the next time is keep your head up so you can see where he's going and get your hands out in front of you. That's got to be a helpless feeling, Neil, for an offensive lineman when the man you're blocking gets behind you like that and you, you turn around. What are you going to do? <laughs> Trip him. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you grab him, you're going to past your team and there's absolutely nothing you can do. Well, you, you're going to get beaten every once in a while, especially with the, by the good ones like Williams. As Balderton just gets this cut off, Henry Williams at the 41-yard line. Sprints to his right. He may get around the corner. And he steps out of bounds at the 24-yard line. They'll rule him out at the 24 of Hamilton. But on the final play of the third quarter, the gizmo gives the Eskimos a lift as they trail by six. We will start the fourth quarter at Iverwind Stadium with the Edmonton Eskimos trailing by six points, but... 
at the Hamilton 24. After Gizmo Williams brought back in his ball and punt some 24 yards. Flag flies on a first down carry by Johnstone. That gained about Mike two Parker yards. You'll find the Tiger, Tiger Cats are a little bit anxious. Offside, Hamilton 59, first down repeated. Rod Skillman offside is Al Bruno. Looks on. But well, you certainly don't want to give the Eskimos too many shots down in close. They were able to stuff the play by Walker, but this just gives them another chance. Bruno always has that why me look on his face. <laughs> First and five, Eskimos. From their 19, Johnstone carrying. Skillman hit him. So did Gadavekas. Napierkowski, 79, who's in the game. And Johnstone will be stopped well short of the first down. A gain of two yards down to the 12, the 17, pardon me, of Hamilton. Second down and three for the Eskimos. Bob, I think we're seeing exactly what Al Bruno said to us today, that he's had to rely on his defense many times when the offense just hasn't been able to get into gear. And his defense has played an outstanding game tonight. Can they hold here? Johnstone carries, and he's cut down before he got to the line of scrimmage. The play was made by 79, and that's Mark Napierkowski, who got through to make the first contact. The Tiger Cats seem to be doing a good job along the line of scrimmage, being able to take on a block and their responsibility, and then slide into the hole. So it's third down and two. Eskimos at the Hamilton 16, and Jerry Corrick comes on to try to cut the lead to three points. He'll try a 22-yard field goal. Corrick, Corrick is wondering, it looks if Edmonton is a man short, and he'll take the delay of game penalty. They were a man short. Time down violation, Edmonton number four, third down. Trevor Bowles comes into the game. So alertly, Corrick, noticing they're a man short, takes the penalty. The five yards shouldn't matter that much on the field goal try, but uh, the man they were short may have allowed Hamilton to get in and block it. Well, that happens occasionally when there's a lot of injuries, and the injuries affect the special teams charts. And sometimes if you're not aware or if no one comes up and tells you the man in front of you has gone down, there's no way of knowing you should be in the game. So it'll be a 28-yard try by Corrick instead of a 23-yarder. Greg Faber, the holder. No win factor. Corrick puts it up and through. And that makes the Hamilton lead 16-13. This is a Foster's Lager telecast on the Canadian foot. Corrick's kickoff after the Edmonton field goal. Zatilny steps his way across the 40 and then has the boom lowered at the 42 by Junior Robinson. That's the second or third time tonight that little Wally Zatilny has been leveled. Well, Junior Robinson played safety for a while last year at the Eskimos, but this is a, called a rock and roll here because he just hammers him. Just trying to get his balance. Boom. <laughs> Well, you wonder how many of those <laughs> Wally's that tell me can take in the course of a, an evening and a hot, humid evening on top of it. He's been popped, as I say, about three times tonight. But he keeps coming back for more. Jed Tommy carrying on first down. Nifty little move to the outside. And he'll gain close to five for the Ticats, whose lead has been trimmed to 16-13. 12 minutes, 41 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The passing problems of the Tiger Cats, I guess, really shouldn't be too un surprising because coming into this game, the Eskimos have held their opponents to just to a 50% passing average, and that's not very good, and that's, I mean, they've done that job again tonight. Second down and six, Tom Porras to throw. Now he'll run. He gets around the corner and dives 
They mark them out at the 50, 50 and a half yard line of Hamilton, and that's a couple of yards short of a first down. Well, doing what you have to do to get the first down, of course, understanding, just giving a little chuck of the Ron Howard there. He came up just a hair short, about a yard and a half to be exact. Paulus Baldiston kicked three field goals in the first half from 41, 40, and then 42 yards. Hunting uh, has been a bit of a struggle for him again tonight, as it has been all season. Third down and a couple. Ty Cats at their 50. As Baldiston has time. And gets it to Henry Williams at the 21. And he slips, trying to find some room, pinned by David Sobe. I think the Tiger Cats special teams have done a pretty fair job on Henry Williams tonight. Even so, they seem to have him corralled. You can just never give up on that guy. Total offense for the Eskimos, 168 yards. And they were averaging 415 a game in their first four games. Hamilton defensively, though, had only given up 277 yards per game coming into this game, which was the best yardage yield total in the CFL defensively. The Hamilton defense has played so tough and they have for years, and you can compare them to a group a little bit west of here. Saskatchewan Rough Riders have had their problems in the last couple of games. Maybe the best two front fours in the game, but I think Joe Farragelli believes that the front four on the field tonight is even better than the one in Saskatchewan, and I'm sure there'll be others that disagree, but he's the one that has to face him tonight. Farragelli and Durchik trying to figure something out at the sidelines. Tracy Ham zips one, scrambling around, and completes it up to Tom Richards at the 32-yard line of Edmonton, and that'll give the Eskimos a first down. Richards with some great quickness and speed, a product of the University of Alberta. He's got married in the offseason. Maybe that's why he's playing so well. Gets a chance to release to the inside. Now watch him go back out. It's a zone. Settle down and find an area. He looks around. He says, hey, no one's around me. Throw me the ball. It's tough when you know you have to catch the ball going to a guy like Frank Robinson who's going to close in and try to knock you over. First catch of the night for Tom Richards. Wally Zatelny, who was shaken up on a kick return here a minute or two ago. We are told they should be back in the game. He's smiling about his latest punishment. <laughs> Eskimos trailing by three. First and ten at their 32. Ham falls, gets up, and get, gets about six or seven yards on a broken play, if ever there was one. Well, Joe Caragelli stressed it. Tracy Ham has a lot to learn, and he's learning it very quickly, but one of the things they knew, being Hugh Campbell and Joe Farragelli and the rest of the, the scouts, Frank Morris and Edmonton, is what a tremendous athlete he was, and I think he showed you right there, having to fumble the ball, recover it, he gets up field six yards, I mean, he just like he's come out of it, the starting blocks. Tom Richards back in after missing a play, second down, four yards to go, Eskimos at there, 38. Ten minutes left now, fourth quarter, 16-13 Hamilton, Ham! Has it intercepted? The seventh turnover of the game, the fifth interception by the. 9:55 left in the fourth quarter at Iberwind Stadium. Lance Shields has just intercepted Tracy Ham, the seventh turnover of the game by the Edmonton Eskimos. Well, just a, the only way to describe this is a great reaction to the ball. Shields has to lay out for it. The receiver is open at the time the ball is thrown, but great anticipation by Shields. And a night of misery for Tracy Ham continues from the 46 of Edmonton. Porras spreading out to the right, and he's going to hang out of the ball and go out of bounds at the 40-yard line for a gain of close to six yards. As Neil Lumsden nimbly got out of the way. Close to six and almost an, an analyst, or a, what am I called, a color commentator. 
Boy, that shakes up, doesn't it, when they're <laughs> coming over here? They look so much bigger with shoulder pads on Bob. Yeah, and you told me you wanted a piece of that. <laughs> but you want to be you want to be properly attired. I understand that. Thank you. Boris gained close to six with second and a long four. Jed Tommy trying the middle, and he won't get it. He needed to reach the 36 of Edmonton, and he's around the 38. As Baldiston and the field goal team have already started onto the field, at least as Baldiston has. Well, a successful field goal will give them a cushion, but of only six points, and I think that that one point is going to be very important. Eight minutes, 58 seconds left. It's. I know Hamilton wished they could get closer and put it in the end zone for a major because you just don't know with this Eskimo offense what's going to happen. Well, Neil, if the Ticats lose this game, and they're leading by three right now, but if they lose, they'll have to look back at missed opportunities like this one. Seven turnovers, and they've had to settle for field goal attempts and other times for nothing. As Baldiston, though, does deliver with a 45-yard field goal, and the Ticats are up by six with eight and a half minutes to go in the game. They've been on Paulus Baldiston here in Hamilton about his punting, but they can't complain about his field goal kicking tonight. Four for four, his fourth from 45 yards. Just the reaction showed you how important they believe that kick is. Tracy Ham and the Eskimos once again will try to get their offense on track, and once again, Ham throws an incompleted pass. Oh, Bob, that was a classic example of Ham coming out and throwing the ball to an area and, and expecting the receiver to be there. Is behind there, you see the foot of Larry Ruck wrapped and put in ice. And before he, the game, he came out with some sandals on. And he had that toe of the right foot and the ankle all taped up. And Ralph Schultz has got the the ice on the net. This has been a tough game tonight. Or has it ever? Second and ten. Edmonton from its 35. Tracy Ham throws to the sidelines. Sandusky makes the catch at the 47-yard line. 12-yard gain. And an Edmonton first down. 19-13. Tie catch after that fourth was ballist in field goal. Well, okay, oh, just your basic down and out. Sandusky is able to get to the corner and, and just keep those toes in. Wondering, Bob, if the heat's starting to wear a little bit on the Eskimos in our break. Only the Eskimos took a few of their helmets off, not the Ticats. So I think they're feeling the heat's starting to take its toll. Oh, it has to be. Tracy Ham fires. Sandusky at the 43, knocked out at the 40 by Les Brown. That's a 22-yard, 23-yard gain for the Eskimos as Tracy Ham appears to maybe be starting to find the range now. Well, Jim Sandusky, they compare him to Brian Kelly, but it's not even fair. They're both tremendous receivers, but just simply Les Brown losing his footing and going down. But that quick move by Sandusky is probably the reason that Brown stumbled a bit and lost his footing. I think when you've played as long and done as much as Brian Kelly has done, you can be compared to him. But there's no question that Sandusky is an outstanding player. And if he does play long enough, we'll pile up some mighty impressive numbers of his own. Well, you know, Joe Fergilli said not only has he got great physical abilities, but he's smart. He knows what to do and knows the situations on the field. And once again, Dave Richardson, the right guard of the Eskimos, who came back into the game, is having some problems with that knee. The head coach never stops thinking. Or worrying. <laughs> Richardson limping out. Tom Richards joining him in a walk to the sidelines. Well, that's one way the Eskimos get the plays in the Tracy Ham. They rotate their slot backs. Richards, Rick House, and Marco Sinka. Second down and uh, eight Eskimos at the Hamilton 38. Tracy Ham slips, regains his footing, gets the ball away, and they roll no catch. At the 33-yard line, the intended receiver was Jim Sandusky. Uh, Tracy Ham lost his footing as he tried to step to his right, and then I don't think he ever really got it back properly to deliver the football. Did you slip? Come here, Trace. That's Gary Durchick, the offensive line coach, to the right of Joe Farragelli. Jerry Corrick is going to attempt a 45-yard field goal. He's made them from 36 and 28 yards tonight. Gabber puts it down. No way. And Carrick, though, pulls it badly to the left. 
Les Brown will concede a single point, I believe. He'll use up some time before he does it, though. Still on his feet, finally falls. And is touched down. So it's now 19-14 for Hamilton with six minutes and 46 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Bob, in the games we've done this year, we've seen a number, a variety of snaps. Some good, not some not so good. But I think Blake Dermott, who's been snapping both for converts, field goals, and punts, does an outstanding job. He gets the ball back so crisply, tight spiral, low to the ground. Makes it easy for Greg Vavra. Well, it's just another day at the park for Joe Farigelli. He watches the field goal try sail wide. Doesn't get too upset about it. And when you're 59 years of age and have been coaching as long as Joe Farigelli has been, I guess missed field goals don't exactly register on the Richter scale. Short gain on a first down run for the Ticats. Well, after tonight's game, as always, we will select the Canadian Football Network most valuable player. We hope you'll be with us to meet that individual and hear from him. Once again, we have a, a player down on the field, this time a Tiger Cat, and it's number 14, Scott Flagel. I don't know, Bob, I don't know if I've ever seen more players go down in one game than I have this evening. Well, especially in the second half, Neil, it seems like every other play we've had an injury. And, you know, they've been of just about every kind you can imagine. A lot of cramping, kind of thing we expect in this sort of weather, hot and humid. But uh, twisted ankles and torn biceps, you name it, it's happened tonight. Larry Ruck got kicked in the ankle. Replacing Ruck on the defense is Mike McLean. He'll play the outside, and I'm sorry that was not Scott Flagel. As you can see, Steve Jackson. Edmonton Eskimos had a 10-9 lead at halftime, but Hamilton regained the lead when Steve Stapler cut a six-yard touchdown pass from Tom Porras late in the third quarter. Jerry Corey cut the lead to 16-13. Paulus Balliston then restored the six-point Hamilton lead with a field goal. And Corrick has just kicked a single for Edmonton a couple of minutes ago on a wide field goal. And it's 19-14, Hamilton leading Edmonton with six minutes and 19 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Al Bruno suggested he might buy a set of blinders for Paulus Balliston so he couldn't look up when it comes time to catch the ball in the punt formation. Jerry Corrick disappointed with his last kick, a 45-yard field goal try that he did not hit very well. This is the kind of the game where the kickers really move into the spotlight, and as Baldiston has kicked four field goals from 40 yards or beyond. A very key reason for the Ticats' 19-14 lead. Second and nine, Hamilton, Horace. Runs away from the rush, gets the football off. No good. Intended for DiPietro at the 53 of Edmonton. Well, in the Ticat backfield right now, because Johnny Jones is out and Steve Jackson went out the last play, it's Jed Tommy alone lining up with five receivers. And credit goes to the offensive line here. Porce gets good opportunity. You see the people pushing by in the, the rush out to the outside, tying up the middle. It's a pretty well-thrown ball. He's not hit till after he gets rid of it. Almost seems like this moisture, the humidity in the air, is making it tough for the guys to catch the football. We're going to watch the 13th punt of the game by Paulus Baldiston. Jerry Corrick has punted 10 times. That's a total of 23. That's a lot of punts. And tells you how well the defenses have played or how poorly the offenses have played. Take your pick. Henry Williams. Trying to spring an opening to his left, but good coverage by Corbin and Rocky DiPietro. And Williams is stopped for no return on a 34-yard punt. Darrell Corbin has had a big job to fill with Ben Zambiazzi, not in the Tiger Cat team anymore in the middle of that defense, and he's done a good job. Good job not only on defense, but he's a big hitter on special teams. Very similar to what Kenny Ford means to the Calgary Stampeders. Lots of hustle, throws himself around, and makes a lot happen. 
Hamilton Tiger Cats are five minutes and 30 seconds away from their first win over Edmonton at Iverwin Stadium since 1977. And they beat the Eskimos here 27 to 22. You remember that, Neil? I remember the game, yes. <laughs> I wasn't in Edmonton then. There's Tracy Ham throwing long. No good. Down at the 33-yard line intended for Sandusky. Lance Shields, good coverage. Lots of time. This one goes up for grabs. You can almost see right there. He said, all I had to do was squeeze, and it was mine. Here's a, where I spoke earlier about Tracy Ham buying more time with his receivers. What a quick little move right there. The ball's thrown. That's a catch. But that hesitation, Tracy Ham having to roll out and gather himself again to throw the football, allowed Lance Shields to make a good defensive play and recover. Second and 10, Eskimos from there, 36. The clock is now down to five minutes left, fourth quarter. Ham's pass is caught by Marco Sincar up at the 46 of Edmonton. Very close to an Eskimo first down. Depends where they're marking him when he started, made the catch and went into a slide. No team, he's been down on his knee. Shake it, boys. He's down this way. It looks like it might be just a wee bit short, and it is. Okay, elephants. Let's go. Let's go now. Joe Ferragelli calls for the elephants, the extra blockers, the short yardage men, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> the big guys. No, no, they're guys. I don't know if I'd want to be called an elephant. you hear the contact on this third and short yardage. Well, Tracy Ham had plenty for the first down and lost the football. The Tiger Cats think they have it. No indication yet from the officials. Well, there's a lot of tugging and pulling going on, and I think Howard Fields is the one who's going to come up with it if it's a Tiger Cat. But it's not. Ah, uh, they're ruling Edmonton football. Actually, Arnold Grievous comes up with the ball, but uh, yeah. they say no. It's Edmonton football. That's our fucking ball! Well, that was a close one. This is a... A quarterback sneak turn almost turned into a quarterback draw. Boy, he a great job on the right side with Trevor Bowles kicking out. Now it's just like trying to pick up Jax. Who's got it? Well, uh, there's no way we can tell conclusively, and I don't think any replay will tell, show us conclusively who had the football when all was said and done. The Tiger Cats obviously feel strongly that they had enough men around it to have someone recover it so do the fans that's understandable but the important thing is the officials have ruled it's Edmonton football first and ten at their 49 Tracy Ham with a screen pass Chris Johnstone tripped up by Daryl Corbin after a gain of about five yards that's a great call. You figure the defense is all going to be fired up and coming after them, and they were. You watch the rush of the front four. And now they just slide away and get people downfield. Good block right there on Frank Robinson, but Corbin again coming over from his linebacking spot and just getting a piece of Johnston. Second and five at the Edmonton 54-yard line. Fires complete Sandusky at the 40 into the 37 of the Ticats with three minutes and 40 seconds left. Hamilton leading by five points. As the Eskimos did in many a situation when it gets tough and you want the catch, you went to Brian Kelly. Looks like that position now has been taken by Jim Sandusky. A simple down and find your spot. Just throw and catch. It's that simple right there. Sandusky will come left this time. 
Stephen Jones wide right. First and 10, Edmonton at the Hamilton 37. Tracy Hand throws, intercepted by Grievous. Turnover number eight by the Eskimos. 3.02 left in the fourth quarter. This CFN game is brought to you by Foster's Lager. With 3.02 left, the story of the game, a 40-yard interception return for a touchdown by Ron Howard that gave Edmonton a 10-9 halftime lead. Six Hamilton interceptions. And Tracy Ham having a rough night. I don't see. I don't think you're going to see many any better than that with Arnold Grievous forcing to the outside to get in this coverage area and has to come back and make a diving catch to make the interception. Six interceptions by Brown, Rockford, Gadavecas, Fields, Shields, and now Grievous. Six different players picking off Tracy Ham. Ty Katz leading by five. First and ten from their 35. Porus. He's going to run with it, and he'll gain three or four after sticking it on his hip and just heading left with it. The key for the Tiger Cat offense right now is put together a couple of first downs and keep the ball in bounds. The 2.41 left and counting as of now. They want that clock to run, so I'd say two or three first downs, and they might have it. Now they want to use as much time as they can, Neil, but you're right. With two and a half minutes to go, you want to get a first down or two as well because if you give it back to Edmonton with two minutes left, well, that's a lot of time. That's all the time they need. Horace puts it up long. Winfield has it at the Edmonton 37. And should be celebrating for good reason. He threw a heck of a football, but look at what he's got to look through and deliver the football. Boom, right in the face by Danny Bass. He doesn't even know if the ball's been caught. This isn't easy, I can promise you. And you certainly can't fault the coverage because Benjamin is right there. Winfield just simply slides away from the defensive back because the ball's thrown to the outside and he had room to adjust. Well, Earl Winfield in the third quarter caught a 60-yard pass from Tom Porras that set up Hamilton's only touchdown, and he gives him a, a big play there. First down at the Edmonton 37. Jed Tommy will carry up the middle for five or six yards. As the game goes on, there's lots happening to the outside. They say coaches say they like people to be involved in the game. <laughs> That's being involved in the game on a running play, like a couple of Rams butting heads. That was a 35-yard gain by Winfield on the, the pass just a minute ago. Second down and four from the Edmonton 32. Porras is going to keep moving to his left, and he won't get the first down. He's to the 31-yard line, which is approximately where they began the play and so with 151 remaining we will once again see Paul as Baldiston he has kicked four field goals a fifth would give the Ticats an eight point lead the others were all important but this one even more so as you watch as Baldiston just watching the kicking team the others, Neil, have all been from 40 yards or longer. This one will come from 38. Boris holding the clock running. As Baldiston hits it well and gets it right through there. Bob, that you can almost tell from the sound of the boom. After he hit it, it was such a solid kick. Once again, the threesome, the snapper and the holder, and then they have to get it together for the kicker. They've done that well tonight. The laces are turned to the front. Nice, clean surface to put your foot on. <laughs> yeah, Al Bruno likes what he has seen from Paul as Ballaston. Of course, as Ballaston is no stranger to kicking heroics, as you will recall, he kicked six of them in the Grey Cup game two years ago was named the top Canadian player for that effort. Hamilton won that game naturally. 
Tracy Ham scrambling, running up to the 40-yard line. He'll gain five on a long haul. A minute 22 left in the fourth quarter. Hamilton up by eight, 22-14. Lots of shots being taken. Daryl Corbin right there. When a quarterback runs, you watch how the defensive linemen have to chase him but can't see what's going on over their left shoulder. Watch Bill Stevenson just in the right part of your screen. Boosh. Pretty good hit. That's a lot of... <laughs> Bill Stevenson's a big man. 290 pounds. I don't know about you, Neil, but I don't envy Hamilton having to play again in uh, four days' time in Toronto. Oh, it's going to be tough on the Ticats, and that trip back from Vancouver and then practicing would be also tough on the Toronto Argonauts, but not nearly as tough as it will be coming out of this game, because this has been not your ordinary football game as far as contact goes. Corbin seems to be okay. Jim Rockford is the other injured Hamilton player. He has one of the six Hamilton interceptions tonight against Tracy Ham. Jim Rockford, a very valuable part of that defensive secondary. He's backed up for a couple of weeks, but he has started at the halfback spot. When Rockford came out of the University of Oklahoma, he was drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals, the baseball team, in the 11th round, but he had already signed a letter of intent, I'm sorry, before he went into university, so he couldn't go. He's a pretty good athlete. And a rather sore one at this moment, as he is favoring his right arm leaving the field. Edmonton's backup quarterback, Greg Baver, looking on with Craig Schaefer. Second and five, Tracy Ham hits Tom Richards. He stretches ahead, tries to get the first down, and looks like he did. Well, stretching ahead to get the first down and working towards that sideline to stop the clock. Minute 13 left. Bruno didn't like the position the referees spotted the ball, as you probably had concluded. A minute 13 to go. That stopped the clock. First and 10 Eskimos at their 45. They're down by eight. Ham looks in the left flat for Chris Skinner, but he underthrows him. Jim Rockford, once again, another player being examined. This time in the head area, looks like the neck. Dr. Levy. They pay so much more attention, and rightfully so, when they're, they get little zingers or numbness through the neck and through the shoulders after contact. Second and 10, Eskimos at their 45, a minute nine left. And lots of time, and now lots of room. Frank Robinson angles him out of bounds, but not before he got to the Hamilton 52-yard line. And Edmonton first down with 101 left on the clock. Well, Tracy Ham is going to be looking downfield and only being pressured by the front four. Good job by the Eskimo offensive line, giving him a pocket. Lots of time, but there are more people back there because they're dropping everyone in the zone area. They're dropping the linebackers deep because they know he has to get downfield. First and 10 Eskimos, the clock, which shows 101, won't start until the ball is snapped because Ham went out of bounds. Again, runs away from the rush. Mike Walker giving chase. Tracy Ham, Mike Robinson also eyeing him up. But Ham is all the way down to the 34 of the tie Cats for another Edmonton first down with 52 seconds left. It's a bend but don't break attitude for the defense right now. They've played the Eskimos very tough tonight. But boy, does Tracy Ham have the ability to take off and ramble with the football. Rolling left again. Not bad protection, but you give him the smallest seam, and there's not much room there, and he's running. I'm expecting him sometime to fake going out of bounds and turn it back in if he sees some light. Well, Ham has to be tired, but those big defensive linemen of the Ticats must be exhausted now from chasing him around. Ham's pass is short. Intended for Marco Sincar, no good. 47 seconds remain now in the fourth quarter. 22-14 Hamilton. Second and 10, Eskimos. Hamilton, 34. Ham 
again with pressure. Gets the ball away. No good. Sim Carr, once again, the intended receiver, but Tracy Ham just did not have a chance to set up and throw that the way he wanted to. Another play coming in, being called by Gary Dirchick and Joe Faragelli. Tom Richards brings it in. 42 seconds left on the clock as Mike Walker, who's had a tremendous game, is probably just out of gas. We hope that's all it is. Well, that heat has a way of sapping the energy, and no matter how many times you get ice cubes put down your back and the cold water squirt in your face and the cold towels and all that stuff, it's just that this time of day really takes its toll. And you can see everyone's getting down on one knee and getting as much oxygen as they possibly can right now. Grover Covington, who has played alongside Mike Walker for the last seven years on that Hamilton defensive line. Also checking on his buddy. I think that comparing the coaching styles, both coaches are very similar in the way they treat and run their football teams. Kind of lay back, but when it can, comes time to get the job done, you better be ready to play because you can't fool around on the practice field unless you know what you're doing. And it does appear as though Mike Walker is nothing more than winded, and what a tremendous hand he's getting. Third down and 10 Eskimos. Hamilton 34, 42 seconds left. Edmonton down by eight points. Tracy Ham slips, loses the ball, and he will not get it away. Hamilton will take over and will likely win the game. Well, there's not much you can say. That front four, even without Mike Walker, is tenacious in the style and the way they're playing. There's nothing like being on a roll as a player. You know things are going well for you. And when you can pin your ears back, like this front four has done, you only have one thing on your mind. Get to the quarterback. <laughs> 36 seconds left on the Iberwind Stadium clock. <laughs> Ty Cats with a ball at their 41-yard line. Now Edmonton still has a timeout left, so they will be able to stop the clock at least once Jed Tommy carrying through the middle gains about five up to the 46 or 47. 32 seconds now. You now you're forcing, you want to make something happen, and he's rolling out and he's got the time, but he just slipped. Nothing more, nothing less. He just lost his footing and the ball popped out, and he had to make sure he had to get back and get the football. And the clock is running. It's down to 18. You can see it now. Second down and about five. Ty Katz. Porras taking the snap from center. Going down on one knee. So unless Edmonton calls a timeout. What's coming will be one but they have Eskimos have called a timeout with 11 seconds left. Meaning the clock won't start until the ball is snapped on the next play. And this forces Hamilton into a decision. Do you punt and risk it being blocked, or do you just run a play on third down and then give Edmonton the football if you don't make the first down and let them have one crack at getting it in the end zone? Bruno had the punting team headed on the field, called them back, and now they're going out again. Well, you heard Joe, Ger Joe Farragelli say they have to punt. The clock is stopped. And now they're going to send everyone, plus more if they could sneak them on the field, to get after this punt. Henry the Gizmo Williams back deep. That's why I got everybody going. You can uh, understand from what Mr. Farragelli has been saying that all 11 men on the Edmonton line are going to be pursuing Paul as Baldiston with Gizmo Williams the only man back as Baldiston gets it away quickly and Henry Williams has it at the 26 three seconds left on the clock Williams tries to get out of bounds and does but time has expired 
And for the first time since 1977, the Hamilton Tiger Cats have beaten the Edmonton Eskimos at Ivor Wynn Stadium. Well, it's exactly the way Joe Farragelli called it. The one thing that concerned him about this Ticat team was the defense. The way they played, and regardless of how they played last week against Calgary, he knew the type of players and probably the way they'd be coming out to play tonight after getting waxed by Calgary last week. And he was right. They responded in that way. So the Ticats up their record at 3-2, and two, and the Eskimos are also now 3-2. Stadium turnover is a big story. Six interceptions by the Hamilton Tiger Cats and five field goals by Paulus Baldiston. Ticats win our CFN most valuable player, Hamilton defensive tackle Mike Walker, who is credited with at least two quarterback sacks. We have him for two. That gives him eight on the season. But he was in Tracy Ham's hair all night long. Mike, congratulations. First of all, you, you went down late in the game. You weren't hurt badly, I take it. No, you know what that was? I think it was that heat. It was catching up with me. It was tough out there. My legs just gave out. I couldn't even feel them. And playing against a quarterback like Tracy Ham makes it that much more difficult. You know what? That was training camp. We got in shape. We, he chased the man. We ran him all over the field. He's tough. You couldn't have had much left, none of you, in that last minute when he was making those runs downfield. Oh, no. And you know, the last two minutes, that's when it catches up with you, you know, in that heat. And, boy, I just couldn't feel it. I didn't have it. Mike, the 38-14 loss to Calgary last Friday, I guess that provided all the inspiration you would need. Yeah, you know, that was an incentive because uh, all week I looked at that film because uh, we just didn't go out there and play aggressive on defense like we usually do, and we just gave them the ball game. Al Bruno, your coach, has told us he thought your defense was a little complacent coming off a win in Calgary the week before. Yeah, that's what it was. You know, we let up. We didn't gang tackle like we usually do. Offense had a good game, and then they kind of let up a little bit last week. And as a team, we just didn't play, you know, as a team. You know, this was a tough night for a rookie quarterback named Tracy Ham. Could you sense or did he say anything to tell you that he was really frustrated tonight? No, he didn't. He just keeps grinning. He's a, He's got a good heart. He plays hard. He just kept smiling and kept putting it on us. Your play this season, Mike, has been outstanding. You have to be very pleased with the way things are going in this year's seventh season. Yes, I am because I had a good offseason. I was in Seattle and I trained very hard. And, you know, I came in this year. And I knew I was getting up in there in age, and I knew I had to train hard to stay up with the young boys. Yeah, you feel that at 30, you've got to maybe put a little extra into the offseason. Yeah, you got to work harder on everything. All right, now you go to Toronto on Tuesday. You don't have much time to get ready, do you? No, just three days, and then we're back out there. I can't believe it. <laughs> CFL. Mike, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Mike, CFN most valuable player in our postgame coverage on CFN. We'll continue in a moment. 